this card was one I actually didn't really want to feature in this list. She's definitely strong at the moment, but it was sort of hard for me to believe that she's in the top three strongest right now. However, her 37% usage rate is a stat that I simply couldn't ignore. The Night Witch offers you a lot of useful abilities once she's unleashed onto the board. For starters, her bat spawns can result in ridiculous DPS. Just having two bats out gives her 70 less DPS than a P.E.K.K.A. With two spawns of bats, she surpasses this and becomes one of the highest DPS units in the game. The most interesting asset of the Night Witch is definitely her spell interactions. A big positive to her is that she survives any combination of spells under 6 elixir, meaning you have to spend more elixir than she's worth to kill her off. This is an initial benefit to you as the Night Witch player, of course, because it forces your opponent into a negative trade if they wish to spell her. However, this positive doubles up, because the Night Witch is quite handy poison bait. Using her to bait out somebody's poison in order to punish with a graveyard or a magic archer is an extremely useful interaction, especially because the Night Witch survives just the poison. She's one of the best supporting units in the game due to her spell resistance, insane DPS, and ability to spawn air units despite being a ground unit. The only troop to do this in the entire game. Being on the ground but requiring an air counter is a very unique trait and gives her very minimal ways to counter her on the ground. You almost require an air attacking unit for this ground troop, which can leave your opponent short on air counters, enabling you to punish with other air units if they use up all of their air defense on a Night Witch attack. Overall, she is a very good card, but one I struggle to call broken. She's maybe a 7 or an 8 out of 10 for power level right now and could use only a small nerf in my opinion. Losing one bat upon death may be the solution, and I hope we'll be seeing that in next month's balance changes. The Battle Healer is also a card I'm not entirely sold on. I think she definitely earned a spot on this list, but calling her number two strongest in the game feels wrong for some reason. I think she feels stronger than she is solely because she's a newer concept, but hey, I guess it still counts as a strong card, right? This card is insane in the way that it tanks and heals other units. She has a surprising amount of HP, that of a Valkyrie, and casts three heal spells every 1.5 seconds that she's in combat. Considering a heal spell costs one elixir, and you usually want it down whenever your troops are in combat, those stats are pretty nutty for a four elixir card. Her DPS does let her down a little bit, only being 82, but if you can just keep her behind a tank and let her also tank and attack things, you're not going to notice that DPS. It's crucial to pair the battle healer with troops that are spell vulnerable, but spell resistant, and also deliver high DPS to make up for what the battle healer lacks. Therefore, her best synergy, the Night Witch. These two being strong in the same meta might just be why they feel a little bit lackluster on their own, but played together, they're overpowered. The DPS of the Night Witch, along with the healing ability and health of the battle healer, make for an almost unstoppable combo on offense. I do think that we'll see the rates of this card fall with time. We've already seen her fall by almost half since she's been released. I think people are becoming used to this card and know how to easier counter it, and for that reason, I don't think she needs a nerf quite yet. She's definitely one of the strongest cards in the meta game right now, but could see herself slot into a healthy place with a little bit of time. Finally, a card I won't introduce by saying I'm unsure about its worthiness to be on the list. Elixir Golem is, without a doubt, deserving the number one spot and most powerful card in the meta right now. This guy is still a struggle for players to get to grips with. His insanely high health and damage with just three elixirs seem overpowered for many, even when you factor in his negative four elixir trade-up on death. I personally pretty much haven't touched any other win condition except Elixir Golem since he came out, and there's a strong reason as to why. His matchups against almost all deck types are very good. Placing him to punish against investment decks and placing him to invest if your opponents use their punish are both good and viable strategies to using this win condition. You saw in a gameplay clip just now I had an Expo 2.9 player on strings just by utilizing my Elixir Golem in the right moment. Using him up front to tank for Expos and using him in the back whenever my opponent passed me the play using a defensive Expo. He is the definition of a versatile win condition, an extremely powerful one at that. His synergies with Battle Healer and Night Witch increase his mainstay on the list too. The Night Witch is ideal support for him, being somewhat cheap and causing your opponent a ton of issues whilst they have to be low on elixir. The Battle Healer also works well to get maximum heal value when there are four little pink blobs all over your opponent's tower. Elixir Golem is most definitely the strongest soul win condition out there and fully deserves first place on the most meta cards list in my opinion. Overall, I think we can conclude that these three cards all bolster each other inside of the meta game. Cards like Baby Dragon, Miner, and Magic Archer could all be argued as stronger individual cards, but these three just synergize too well for me to ignore on this list. The meta, as far as challenges and new decks go, should be built around these three cards until we see at least two of them get nerfed. 
hopefully the January balance changes will bring us that, but for now, enjoy the ride of these three cards being supreme. And yeah, that's all for my three most broken cards list. Do let me know what you guys think are the strongest cards in the game down below. Thank you all for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, but apart from that, peace.